All right, I'm paranoid, so I'm gonna wanna, I want to test this. So just a quick overview of everything. This number of columns. I have a count, which is the counter for how many solids I've encountered. For now, I'm just setting my y to 416. Eventually, this will become a loop, so I go up the grid. This for loop starts at 32, so the left side. Keeps going until it reaches 352. Adds 32 each time, so it basically moves one block over. If there is an object at that particular point, then we're going to add one to that a number of times we've, meet, we've collided. Ooh, we may not be able to use place meaning. Let's check this and see if that works, because I think complete line is in the controller, which doesn't have a sprite. Oh well, we'll see. Anyway, if there is exactly that number, so 10, we walked across and there's that many solids, we're going to walk through that row with each of those things, destroy it. Let's see, was I right? Are we not allowed to use place meaning? Yep, we can't use place meaning. That's too bad. All right, so instead of place meaning, I need to do collision point up here as well. The other thing is that collision point is that exact point. So the upper left of all of my sprites are filled in. If you use the default one, keep in mind you may have to move this point a little bit into your sprite, like maybe add one to the x and y, so it actually collides with your particular sprite, especially if it's a more rounded sprite. The other thing is this is not going to return true. This is going to return an ID number, or it's going to return the special key uh, word, which is no one, which also happens to be negative 4. So what I'm going to do is, if you haven't gone through the debugger yet, you may uh, something to note is that all ID numbers of objects are in the 100,000 range. At least that's where they start. So as long as I check for a collision point and make sure it's greater than zero, this should work. All right. Let's see what happens. Blam! Well, that's interesting. I wonder why I didn't destroy that one. Hmm. It's just like, no, I didn't feel like destroying that one. Hmm. All right. Well, I will get back to you on that little issue. That'll be in the next video. Why did that happen? There's... There's... More to this as far as making the rest of them move down. So once I actually destroy everything in a row, so if I do have this count equals the number of columns, I have to move all of the other blocks down. So after I destroy these things, I need to walk through all of the other blocks. So with all the other solids, I need to check and make sure that if their y position is less than where my y is. Now, my y is out here in this loop, and I went inside a with block, so it's actually other dot my y. <laughs> and I suspect all the walls are going to move down. That'll be exciting. Oh, well, I'll fix that in a sec y equals y plus 32. Whee! Down they go. Mm. Yeah, the wall's not moving down would be nice too, huh? So if this is y is less than other dot my y. The other thing I need to do is and make sure this is not a wall. So the, uh, an interesting thing besides the instance ID number 
There's also something called an object index. This says which object type it is. So when you create a new object, it has a particular object index, which is referring to which thing it, actu it is in this list over here. So I want to say if it's not equal to a wall. So the, not e the exclamation point equals means not equal to. The two ampersands is and, logical and. I believe you can use the keyword and there as well. Do to do. There we go. Magic. So step one is trying to get that to work. Once you get that, then we'll take a look at going all the way up to columns. So I'll do that in a little bit. <laughs>